Okay. Right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Vinod Hegade. I'm a consultant liver specialist in Leeds Transplant Unit in UK. This afternoon, I've been asked to give a brief practical introduction and discussion about itch uh, or pruritus in primary biliary cholangitis. And I thank PBC Foundation for this invitation. Today, I will be talking to you about the burden and importance of this symptom in PBC, what patients with PBC need to know and do about this symptom if they have it. We'll be talking a little bit about the medical options uh, that we are currently uh, using and their limitations, and very briefly about potential future treatments for this condition. So you would know if you have suffered with itch in PBC that it is a sensation of scratching your uh, skin and the symptom usually starts in arms and uh, legs. Typically it affects the soles of your feet and palms, but over time in general, uh, it extends to different parts of the body and majority of the patients suffer the itch all over their body. Usually there is no rash or skin lesions associated with the symptom. The symptom of itching is generally worse in the evening or nighttime. And women uh, in the reproductive age group would experience worsening of the symptom around the menstrual periods or if they are using hormonal replacement therapy. It is well known that severe itch is a risk factor for depression in patients with PBC. And in a small um, minority of patients, this symptom can lead to suicidal ideation. Unfortunately, the symptom is extremely common in PBC. This is the study that we did uh, in UK PBC asking over 2000 PBC patients about the symptom. This gives a lifetime prevalence of the symptom in PBC. And this is to date a largest cohort of PBC patients reporting the symptom. And as you can see in the simple bar chart that not everybody with PBC reports the symptom. One in four patients never experience this condition. Whereas up to 74% of patients have reported that they have suffered with this itch at some point during their disease. One in three patients report persistent itch and one in 10 report severe itch all the time. PBC, as you know, is a chronic illness. It's a lifelong condition. So if you don't have itch in the beginning of your disease, it is likely that you may develop this symptom over time. On your left-hand side, you will see the proportion of patients developing this symptom over a period of 10 years since their diagnosis. As you can see at one year, 15%, 30% at five years and 45% at 10 years developed uh, this symptom. It's also very well known that this itch uh, severity is correlates to the age of uh, patient at presentation. The younger the age at presentation, the higher the level of itch severity. And it, it amplifies the significance of the symptom and how much effect it can have on the quality of life of the patient. To complicate the matter more, we have recently found out that in UK, we are not very good in treating this symptom uh, in PBC. This is a recent work that we published showing that treatment of itch in this country is inadequate. As you can see, only 37% of patients with persistent itch received cholestyramine. Cholestyramine is the first line medication that one should be receiving if they have itch from PBC. You can also see that only 50% of patients with severe pruritus were given cholestyramine. So this is inadequate. And there are many reasons for this. One of the reasons could be that clinicians may not be aware of the guidelines, how to treat the itch. The other reason could be patients may not feel comfortable talking to the general practitioners or their clinicians about the symptom. And this is also highlighted by this paper, which was produced by the PBC Foundation. This was a survey of around 600 PBC patients. And as you can see, 
only 42% PBC patients felt comfortable talking to their doctor about itch, and only 53% actually discussed the treatment options for itch. What does this highlight is that it is extremely important for the patients to have some ownership of their disease and the symptom, and they should be able to feel comfortable in discussing the symptom with their doctors and seek advice and seek treatment and not suffer the symptom. When you come to the clinic, it is important we assess your symptom and it is important to assess objectively. Itch is a very subjective symptom and it varies from patient to patient. And it can be quite difficult for doctors like me to assess the severity. What we have at the moment is one of these three modalities to kind of objectify the symptom. We may ask you to score your itch from zero to 10, or we may ask you to uh, draw a line on a, on a horizontal line or a vertical line, which goes from zero to 10 or 10, zero to 100. This is some way of uh, grading the severity of itch. If we want to be a little bit more sophisticated, there is something called as PBC40 itch domain score that has got three elements to it, as you can see. And we ask you to circle uh, these responses and we add them together and we get a score out of 15. And that gives us a idea about how severe your itch is. It is also important to know that if you are taking a beta -colic acid for PBC, it, it may worsen your itch. And this is a very practical point, and it's a very common thing that we have noted in clinical practice, that patients who have baseline itch, when we give them this medication, that itch can get worse. People who don't have itch, if they're given this medication, they may also develop a new itch. So if you are on this medication and if you're suffering itch, please talk to your nurse practitioner or talk to your hepatologist or a gastroenterologist because we may be able to reduce the dose of obeticolic acid to help your um, itch management. So with that background, let's look at what medications we currently have and what are the current uh, management strategies for treating this symptom. As a general measure, we ask you to avoid dry skin we request you to use generous dose of emollients or uh, aqueous cream with moisturizing, cooling topical agents. My favorite is uh, what called as levomenthol, 1% or 2% cream, which contains uh, aqueous cream as well as menthol. So this avoids the dryness of the skin, which can make the scratching worse. We also ask you to shorten your fingernails so that you don't scratch your skin so hard that you may bleed from it and have a risk of secondary infection. Wearing light clothes, preferably cotton, um, and avoiding tight-fitting clothes may help. Also, showering in cold water may also reduce your symptoms. But every patient is different. You may have your own strategy to cope with these uh, debilitating symptoms. As a general rule, if you have rash on your skin along with the itch, I would like you to refer to skin specialist to rule out other causes of um, itching because in PBC, itching is generally not associated with rash. It's important to rule out any blockage or obstruction to the bile duct coming out of the liver. It's important to rule it out uh, by doing an ultrasound scan or an MRI scan of your liver. There are other general conditions that can cause itching, like underactive thyroid, iron deficiency anemia, and these conditions may need a blood test uh, to rule, it, rule these conditions out. We talked about assessing the severity and extent of pruritus. If your itch is very mild and localized to one particular part of the body, we may just give you topical therapy, such as levomenthol, but if it, is, if it is moderate or severe, or if it is generalized, generally, we prefer to give you tablets. What are those tablets? This is a slide showing all the medications we currently have um, in our clinical practice. I generally start patients with cholestyramine. It's also called as Questron. It comes as a sachet of four grams. We ask you to take it in the morning on empty stomach, and I generally give it for about a month. And if patients come back to me and say, well, doctor, my itch is better, 
but it's an awful medication. I can't take it. I switch them to colecevalam, which is a tablet version and it's better tolerated. If cholestyramine or colecevalam are not helping, then we move on to rifampicin, which is probably the best medication for itch in PBC. The problem, of course, with this medication is it needs close monitoring with liver blood tests. So you need a blood test every two or three weeks when you're on rifampicin. The dose is generally started at 150 milligrams and we can take it all the way up to 600 milligrams with careful monitoring. There are other medications available such as naltroxone, sertraline, but usually these medications are not well tolerated and may not be effective. More recently, we have started to use bezafibrate and in some people we can give gabapentin as well. So unfortunately, these are the only few medications available for treating itch in PBC. Therefore, it is important to use these medications in a systematic stepwise way. And all the patients, in my opinion, whoever has got itch should go through this treatment ladder. And it's important for you to understand this so that you can have a discussion with your clinicians as well. What if you have tried all the medications and you're still very itchy? And that's when you go to the top of the ladder, you can see the step five, where there are some rescue treatments available. What are they? One of them is called phototherapy or light therapy. This is using short bursts of ultraviolet uh, light on your skin to break down the chemicals that may be causing the itch. This is proven therapy. This has to be done under medical supervision. Most hospitals in UK have a phototherapy unit and we may refer you to the skin specialists who have the uh, facilities. Please remember, this is not same as going into a sunbed. Uh, the, the, it is completely different to that. This has to be done under medical supervision. The advantage of phototherapy is it's a very uh, short burst of treatment. Treatment may be up to two or three minutes, um, but you may have to have it three times a week, um, up to 12 weeks or 24 weeks. But it is usually very effective. So please talk to your clinicians about it. The other medications available is called plasmapheresis or plasma exchange. This is like your kidney dialysis machine. This is usually done by hematologists or blood specialists. Some units have it, but not available in every hospital. This is where you will be connected to a cannula and blood will be taken from your arm, run through that machine, which separates the liquid portion of your blood called plasma and you will be given a supplement um, solution either with serline or albumin. And again, we have seen very good results with this plasmapheresis. Disadvantage of course, is it needs repeated courses at least twice a week over a period of two to three months and it needs frequent visits to the hospital. The other option of course, is to have something called as um, nasobiliary drainage, which is basically an endoscopy or a camera test where um, uh, a fine bore uh, tube will be placed in your bile duct and it will be brought out of your nose and connected to a bag and the bile can be drained out of that bag. Now this is invasive and there is a risk of um, pancreatitis with this procedure, but in people with severe itch uh, where everything else has failed, this is quite um, important treatment. And we have done this here in Leeds. It's done elsewhere in the country as well. Therefore, it's important to be aware of it. The tube from your nose can be left there for about two weeks, but some people tolerate it for much longer than that. But again, the tube can get blocked and it may need replacement every few months. So those are the treatments available currently. In future, we may have better medications. The top two are possibly um, the more promising ones. Um, uh, IBAT inhibitors, which are called linerixibat or maralixibat, they are not currently available. They are still undergoing the clinical trial, whereas bezafibrate is available at the moment. And there are many other medications listed here on this slide, which may become available in, in near future. This is a slide just to show the effect of um, GSK compound, the IBAT inhibitor, linerixibat. This was our study in Newcastle. Uh, along with Birmingham um, patients when we did it. Short uh, course of two weeks of treatment in about 22 patients with PBC and itch. 
showed remarkable improvement in their symptom after giving this medication for two weeks. So it's a promising drug, and I'm hoping one day it will become uh, available for routine use. Bisafibrate has been around for a number of years, but more recently it has been shown to be effective. This is a study from Netherlands um, where they treated about uh, 70 patients, uh, 24 of them were about with PBC, and they showed that up to 45% of patients treated with bisafibrate had 50% or more reduction in their itch. Um, the medication was given once a day for three weeks. It also reduced their alkaline phosphatase, which is a marker of PBC. So these results have been published in, in a paper and gives us more confidence in using bisafibrate in our clinical practice. So finally, uh, my summary points are that itch, unfortunately, is a very common symptom in PBC. It's important to acknowledge the burden of this um, symptom and understand how detrimental effect it can have on the quality of life. It is a symptom of young women, uh, unfortunately, and it's also very common in people who have uh, not responded to urso deoxycholic acid. I encourage you to understand the symptom. I encourage you to seek medical advice and treatment, and please do not hesitate to talk to your GP or clinicians about this condition in the clinic. As I said, it's important to treat this symptom in a systematic stepwise way with whatever little medications we have. Of course, we need better medications. As I showed you, there are some medications are in the pipeline, and I encourage you to please participate in research studies uh, because we need better drugs. And finally, bisafibrate we have started to use and IBAT inhibitors may become available in near future. So with that, I end my presentation. I hope you have um, benefited from my talk, but if you have any questions about my presentation or if you wish to speak to me, please do not hesitate to contact me via PBC Foundation. Thank you very much for your time.